Welcome to Reading the Green, a golf and fantasy sports show. My name is Mike with Kyle and Jordan on Tuesday, July 16th. This is episode 118, the Open Championship and the Scottish Open recap. Guys, welcome to the pod. Welcome, Jordan. Happy to be here. It's been a few weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> we get like half a Jordan tonight. Yeah. Uh, maybe like a quarter since I'm also sick and just took my NyQuil. <laughs> we will take uh, any Jordan we can get. I we appreciate will. your your presence, sir. <clears throat> we will, because I think, I think, Jordan, this is a topic that we're going to get kicked off with tonight that's really close close to your heart. Member guest season. Is it coming up? Your, your big week. deal? Is that this next weekend? All right. This week, Thursday, Tell us about practice it. round. What's the what's the outlook? Uh, well, you know, I was looking at, we got the flights tonight. You know, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good about that. My partner's now a 15.8, uh, which last year I think he was like an 18. And he's been, he keep, he's been playing better and better. So I don't think he's quite to where his handicap will be if, say, this was in three months. So I'm hoping that I, we get a little bit of an advantage there. Uh, I'm also at my lowest handicap in the last 10 years. Gosh. So that's not wow. cool. What is that? Five and a half. Whoa. What do you think it is? What? Oh, why, I've why been playing so well? Yeah. Great question. I haven't practiced. I haven't putted. I've literally done nothing. I need to have three really good rounds. I shot a 39 tonight with a birdie. Uh, but I think that'll actually help lower my or raise my handicap a little bit because mm. it'll be higher mm. than the last score that gets removed. So we'll yeah, see we where I now end up with the tournament. Gin Gin gives you an 18 hole differential for a nine hole score. So it's things like update very fast now. Yes, especially for league golfers, which I actually kind of like because with with nine and I don't know if this is. I know it was because they wanted to promote like more nine hole play. Like if that's what you're going to play, play nine holes. But there's so many nine hole leagues now that if you're waiting for those scores to combine before they factor in, like you definitely don't get a good yeah. representation of what people are doing. So, well, what's the what's the format at your deal? Was it the typical five, uh, five, nine, nine hole, hole matches? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a basically round robin right in your yeah. in your flight. Whoever can get the most points, each hole is worth uh, a point, nine points in a match. Win, yeah. win more. It's not even you have to win by a fair amount to end up being the winner. Because there's always like you know, someone goes out there, put that eight points, points yeah. or seven, yeah. po- you know, seven and a half points in a match really starts to skew things. Yeah. Kyle. Guess what? Guess what, guys? What I was invited to be in a member guest last weekend. What I did not, I was not able to play, but I was just happy to receive the invite. So thank you. I, you know, I appreciate you. Uh, back in Iowa, he like out of the blue, his 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 partner had a bail. It, it was the area. There's been a lot of flooding. There's been a lot of issues. It's like, hey, long shot. But anyway, you can be down here Friday morning. If it could have started on Saturday morning, I could have pulled it off. <laughs> it's like it. uh it's a it, you might as well i mean with the way these member guests are now and frankly sometimes even the member member you might as well like take a three-night golf trip somewhere because they fill yeah. your schedule up you got practice round thursday well you got dinner thursday like met like men's dinner thursday night and then friday and then a friday night dinner and then saturday and a shootout and it's nuts yeah keep yeah just, i should should have been ready for this with a uh, Henry in front of me, but he sent it to me, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah!" It started at seven thirty Friday morning. There's a par three shootout. There's a shootout silent bidding. There's a putting contest. There's cocktail hours. Y'all are crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's uh well, and I I'll just throw my hat in here too. So Waconia guy, one of our one and done players, has invited me out to well tentative invite to the member guest in one of the clubs in the area you got to sign up on friday so we'll see what happens but they don't do the they don't do the matches they do a two-day quota point game which kyle Ooh. this is now the second week in a row you've heard me talking about quota points so we still got to we still got to tie that one out but which i don't i haven't ever done that for a member guest i've always done the matches and so i'm i'm curious 
the type of like camaraderie and rivalry that it creates because you're really just playing with one other group you know two other groups over the weekend but yeah it still seems like a good time like there's a lot of there's a lot of festivities breakfast lunch dinner shootout all that stuff so yeah i like that's one i do it. always did with my brother too uh oh that's right that's right is the quota points and then they adjust it right for the second day so if you sandbag okay. you get a ton of points the first day you have to get almost as many again the second day okay. makes it fun and, for the right, people that coming from behind yeah nullifies the sandwich you actually want to be you know two or three points up the first day and then yeah five to then ten go to town up. yeah okay all right well they don't give the only thing that bothers me is they don't give premium points for birdies so it's one point for a bogey two for a par and three for a birdie oh, i like so when they go did, four for a birdie so that we did one two one two four eight yeah that's like traditional quota points and then you can really it can really get fun if you just are like playing just hitting the gas all day just try to make birdies yeah. and eagles so all right Word. well good good yeah Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well um a lot of good golf coming up. Which last next couple of pods, we'll be talking about some of our own personal endeavors. But I want to get into some of the professional golf from the weekend since it is major week. Um, Kyle's, or I guess Jordan's sipping on uh, sipping on Nyquil. Kyle's got a smart water. Yeah, I'm in a hotel room. Uh, I've had a I've had a couple of beers, but no, nothing at the moment. <laughs> That's I thought that was the vodka that he just like traveled with or something like that. Yeah. Smart water. Stay well, hydrated. Friends. And I'm I don't have anything special. I mean raindrops from barrel theory is special, oh, but it's also special. all that was available. Took a wrong turn the other night, uh leaving I don't even remember where I was leaving. Took a wrong turn with the kids. Road was closed, ended up at the top ten liquors up on not the one you go to, Jordan, but a different one in, in St. Louis Park. Oh man, the one in the one out by you is awesome. Not oh. the case over by me. Yeah, you know the one by that used to be the MGM. It was right yeah. by Chick Fil A, right? No, we're not Chick Fil A there anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Over on uh, doesn't matter. It's somewhere else. But my point oh. is, I'm yeah. jealous of your top ten. This is what this is the best beer I could find. Yes, yeah, so, well, so they bought out some other like beer, liquor lo- locations, and it hasn't. They've like kept. Yeah. The old supply that they were that, that those crappy beer or liquor stores were getting. Well, uh, there is a guy that probably was doing a lot of beer drinking Sunday night this past weekend. His name is Bobby Mack, Scotland's own Bobby Mack. And Kyle, I need to just know off the bat here, Bobby Mack, the redemption story, or Bobby Mack, the villain. Ooh, it's tough. Um... Did you see, I, I guess, did you see the full uncut audio, which I believe was on the DP World Tour feed from the uh, situation on 18? On 16. Or 16, yeah, sorry. Let me tell you what was going on on Sunday. I didn't have power for almost 24 hours, and so I silently streamed like 20 minutes of the golf tournament on my phone in the kitchen during this time. Now, I, did, I didn't have the attention span to stick it out so but i saw bits and pieces and then i went back and watched not the unedited version so enlighten us so there was a, it was a video floating around on twitter yesterday so bobby mack on 16 just reset the stage if people didn't see it right he, he's he's in the shit uh goes up and takes a full practice swing a full practice swing in in you know takes out plenty of long grass and everything with it and like then the size of a just, cat it's like a cat came out of the ground yes which that alone was a little different, but, and then he just goes, are you shitting me? And freezes and then like, doesn't move. Right. And then he calls his caddy over. It's like, look under my foot. And the caddy comes over and goes, is, is it a snake? <laughs> he thought he was standing on a snake, I guess. Or a, the broadcast thought he was standing on a ball, perhaps. Uh, Kyle, no, Kyle immediately he, turned the TV off. Well, it's, Come on. He's like, what are they going to show? Yeah. Uh, but no, he had four. I'm sure Jordan watched it very intently too. But he has metal spikes on the front four spikes on his on his shoe, and was standing on a sprinkler head because there's sprinklers in the in the rough. 
that maybe the route. fescue was not there before. Maybe their hole got rerouted. I don't know. Yeah. So he got a free job. And knee high rough, fescue got a free job. Which okay. So the the other bit to this is th- this to me is not. It's it's not a pr- this whole thing is not a problem, but there's been a little bit of narrative that maybe he dropped the ball in the area that he had cleared out with his practice swing. Do we have any way to to verify that? I would have to go back and rewatch the video. That's some that's Wyndham Clark question. Patrick Reed stuff right there. Yeah. Jordan is uh, You're muted. He's actually, look how Indy he's, he's he's so into this. He's gesturing, but he's muted. Yeah. Well, he would have had to move the ball closer, like, to where he was standing before, right? That'd be a weird, and to have the sprinkler be in between you He would have had, yeah, he would have had That would be a weird, yeah. I think, I think that he didn't drop it. I know it's, I didn't, I, this is why why I have no issue with this. He took a huge practice swing, which it was a little strange how big that practice swing was, but... The drop, he didn't clear the spot out. And if he did, there's four people standing right there. That would have been like, he would have got immediately blown up for that. He hit a ridiculous shot. And I know he probably got a fantastic lie. He got the opportunity to drop in a, fanta- in a, in a much better spot. But he hit a 240-yard shot out of the fescue to seven feet. Oh, yeah. It was, it was phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he went out and got it done. Yeah, that whole situation was just a little funky, but I don't think anything was beyond the rules no and of course that you know that that got him into the mix but he still had to go out and sink a 20 some footer on 18 to to get the w and so i know i know all these things matter and they certainly matter to adam scott but you know bobby mack three under on the last three holes to win his national open after having his heart ripped out last year by roy mcelroy was a really cool finish um probably the other thing that was cool about that was side the gala on the second floor of the balcony in the clubhouse behind 18 with his arms straight up in the air as, as McIntyre made that putt. Yeah. Uh, it was fun to uh, see the guys cheer on their, the bros on tour, if you will. But do we know if they're bros? Because that seems like a really odd pairing, but I don't know. And what else would it have been though? Right. I don't know. It's cool. It's certainly cool. You're right. Like and, and McIntyre has been on the tour this year. He's been the, on the plane of, mostly a u.s schedule and so you never know who he who he befriends but it is always interesting to see like who who hangs out and and that was pretty cool um other thing i wanted to comment on the end of this uh, of the end of the scottish open here total choke job by by ludbug yes yes and thank you for saying it that way uh that that is for those that don't know what we're giggling about right now uh that's what my son's name is for ludwig and that's what we're going to call him from now on <laughs> but Ludbug literally chili dips uh, an eagle chip on 16 i mean it was probably 30 yards just up over a rise it wasn't even like the pin was tucked over the hill it was a straight up chunk that went about 10 yards and came right back to his feet and then he ended up not getting that up and down makes bogey and and that was that that pulled him out of the, the event so um, other thoughts, other thoughts from the the Scottish Open. Like it's, I actually didn't watch as much as I would have liked. I am, I got morning TV earmarks Saturday and Sunday this week as I am solo with my two boys for the the weekend, the next oh. weekend and the next week. So you can imagine there's going to be a lot of Open Championship watching. Didn't get as much with the power outage and everything on Sundays I would have liked. Yeah, uh, overall it turned out to be a decent week. Uh, the unfortunately it. it it could have been really good uh, if it wasn't for some narrow missed cuts on Friday. Uh, we highlighted him last week briefly, I believe, but Guido, Guido let us down, Mike. <laughs> yeah, let's run through a couple of the, the, the model parts here. So Guido, one of our top power index plays, Guido Migliozzi, misses the cut on the number. I had a whole bunch of guys that we had high up in our model that missed it on the number. Tom McKibben. Who I know Gaiman really likes this week for a bounce back candidate at Royal Troon, but Tom McKibben misses on the number. Decky misses on the number. Keith Mitchell one off, finished minus one. It just it was a couple of guys we kind of liked this week that, uh, especially in a week I feel like I should have I, I did all right. Um, I I felt like could have been better given that there were so few six of six lineups, but 
yeah, a couple, a bunch of ownership gobbled up there at one and two under that just missed the cut. RTG Listener League, Buke, 0215, finishes in first, followed by Ness and AJ Bentley in third. Uh, Kyle, I did comment that I thought the model performed all right. We had 75% of our top plays that we tweeted out make the cut, which I think is pretty good. That usually sets a pretty high floor for you. I think the, the hard part was literally all of our cheapies missed the cut. So whether it was uh, Jordan Smith, Tom Hoagie, Ben on, Zayden Holt with draws after like shooting eight over in the first couple of holes on Friday. So just got really tanked by the sub 7,500 guys. But I got, the rest of it, I felt like got right. Xander, Fitz both made the cut. Probably they kind of stalled out in the weekend a little bit, but felt like I got enough right to have a better week. But got you got to hit those, you got to hit those value plays. And I did not do that. Yeah. Even I, I ended up okay with the five and sixes. Uh, just so close. So close. Guido and Benny yeah. on, man. Benny got me. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about him a little bit uh, in the open preview. But our top contributing expert of the week, Andy Lack, Bobby McIntyre, Wyndham Clark, Xander, EVR, and Victor Hovland. And the gutsiest play goes to Matt Gannon picking up one of the Scots, Connor Simi. I'll go Connor Simi. Connor Sim, something like that. Sure. I mean, this Jordan, is a pronunciation expert, I, I think you nailed it. Yeah. And speaking of Jordan, if there was a way for you to hang out all the way down to the show, I bet you're going to love name game. But if you can't, <laughs> you're going to have you're going to have to to listen back. Are you making Kyle pronounce all of them? He doesn't know yet. He doesn't. Know. Oh, good. Uh, Jordan, why don't you go ahead with uh, with one and done, though? You, you, oh. you had something to celebrate. Yes, uh, someone named Robert McIntyre won it, and I picked him for my I think that's my second win of the season, maybe third. Uh, but two of us, uh, Jacob King and I, both picked him. Got a little one point five million dollar payday. Uh, we had a couple Aaron Rise down at three hundred thousand, but uh, not much else. Only six people made over a hundred grand this week. Uh, yeah. So not a ton of movement. Um, I did move up. I don't remember what I was at last week, but I know I'm higher than the, this week. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm in third. Champles still got the lead, 2.7 million ahead of everyone else. Uh, then Stogie's 500k ahead of me. So after that, there's a bunch of people. No, why'd uh, you why'd you pick why'd you pick Bobby Mac? Because he's Scottish. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, I, I was looking at it of like the people that I had left to select. Right, we're getting down there, and we I didn't want to pick. I think I had one or two like bigger names, and since it was only one point five million, I wasn't going to pick them with a couple tournaments that are left. So, uh, I I remembered his name because I think he won earlier in the year, right? He did. He won the Canadian Open. He is sixteenth in the world rank. So I suppose as you're scrolling through your uh, your list of guys, he's you know going to be the second or third option. That's not grayed out. So. Um, yeah, God, McIntyre on quite, quite a run. And he and he's great at these uh, national opens. He won the Canadian one. He won the Scottish yeah. one. You're right. Just You're right. Have, he, we'll see. He loves his opens. He does. Let's we'll see how much he loves the British Open or the Open Championship. He might be. He might be a little steamy this week. Let's uh, let's get into it though. The Open Championship. At Royal Troon, this is the first time we're headed back to Troon, Scotland at Royal Troon. Last time we played there was 2016 when Henrik Stenson outdueled Phil Mickelson in, frankly, an open championship that I, rem I remember watching, but doesn't stick out. To, I mean, it, it probably should be it's eight years ago. It probably should be a little more rooted in my memory, but these guys absolutely egged each other on on Sunday and torched the field. I think they finished. I think Stenson shot 63 on Sunday and Phil shot 65. And uh, they ended up being pretty clear of the rest of the leaderboard. Before that, you had Ben Curtis and Justin Leonard capturing Open Championships at Royal Troon. So there's a little bit of history here um, in defending Open Champion, or what do they call it? Champion Golfer of the Year, Brian Harmon, uh, will also be in the mix this week. We have a 
a field of uh, with top 70 in ties. So just realized that we have a few extra players making the cut this week. And um, Kyle, I'm curious what you got on on Royal Troon. I know it's been it's been adjusted a little bit since uh, since the guys played last in 2016. But the one note that I wrote down here was that you need to do all of the things, but that there is literally zero correlation to success putting. And frankly, the almost the better you putt, the worse you finish on this golf course. Yeah, uh, it, I am overall just excited to see this course play out. Um, I think the correlation there you mentioned, Mike, is because, well, one of the reasons from a putting perspective is the greens are really small, uh, especially, and they're slow. Uh, from a stint rating perspective, there is, they're as slow as you're going to see at nine and a half to ten and a half. Um, they tend to be pitched in the front and larger in the rear, uh, so they can kind of play with things from a pin perspective. Jordan, you're on view. I mean, that was right there for you. I'm yeah. laughing. I, all I needed to do was laugh. But, <laughs> yeah, it usually pitches in the front. Uh, <laughs> because of large rears. And then, um, yeah, uh, because of the small greens, uh, around the green is going to be uh, play out really well, or play out really importantly as, as well. But it's a ocean links course. So wind is going to be a big factor. And right now, it actually looks like we could get some fun this week. If you you look at uh, Windfinder, the forecast for Thursday, it has uh, the speeds pretty much all day, you know, low teens with gusts at around noon up to maybe even pushing 30, and then into 30s Friday afternoon as well. So uh, I like it if we get a proper open championship with a little bit of uh, you know wind at play, at least one or two days to get a little bit nasty. You know, off the tee, uh, the thing that I'm most intrigued about here is uh, it's there's funky landing spots is the way I would say it. Uh, It kind of threatens you. Hey, if you want to take on more, you're going to have to take uh, from a distance perspective, get closer to the green. You're going to have to take on more variability and more just, I guess, what I would call weird weird things. Uh, You have the obviously you have thick, wild, native rough. If you get off course, you have gorse. You have hollows and hillocks uh, and even just funkiness within the fairway at times, which are progressively more as you get closer to the green. So that's the thing that I was going to comment on that I think, you know, if you listen to any Rick Gaiman stuff, he is a big like overhead satellite imagery guy. And so he does a lot of a lot of his prep based on the overhead shots of holes. And I think he comments a lot on how talk about these progressive challenges the further out you go and i think what's cool about that is you don't end up with everybody hitting from the same spot which i think can happen sometimes maybe at like st andrews where it doesn't really matter how far you hit it off the tee the ball is going to run out to the same areas anyways here you sort of have they said these progressive hazards maybe the the bunkers pitch pinch in a little bit more every 30 yards up the fairway, or you have some of that rough or gorse come into play. And so you just force a lot of decisions off the tee. Do you want to play at 250? Do you want to play at 290? Do you want to try to hit at 330? And and I think you're probably going to see, based on the conditions, you're going to see a lot of different choices. And I think that uh, that should be interesting to watch over the, over the course of four days. Yeah, I don't remember much about 16, uh, but just reading up on it and, and seeing some of the uh, some of the content from back then, I am I'm very excited about the week, Mike. I'm watching this play out. Yeah, I think they also have is it the eighth hole? They have a they have like a hundred and stamp. The postage stamp, a hundred and ten yard, twenty yard par three that's become popular in majors where guys are like happy to make par, maybe happy to make yeah. bogey. <laughs> well yeah, I, I love the short par threes and drivable par fours, you know. I'm gonna be watching it playing in my shots next for next year. I was just going to ask, Jordan, is this on the Rota for, uh, gosh, man, we, that's the whole pod of your big Scotland trip. That feels like (laughs) we should talk about. Yeah. Well, well, let's, uh, let's see how, what's it you think after you watch it on TV all week? Yeah. I watched, was watching some of it last night. They did what Johnson Wagner was out. Oh, was he? uh, They, he followed a group on that hole, uh, and they were all in the center of the green 
right yeah. end. <laughs> yeah, they were all pr- practicing their putting to different parts from the center, and he tried to hit it out of the uh, bunker. I think it was the coffin bunker. Yeah, I think Wyndham took the mic and was narrating it, and Johnson, he hit it well, but it went off into the other bunker. Yeah. He's like, and there, here comes a triple for Johnson Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Awesome. Okay. All right, Kyle. Well, what do we, what do we, what do we like so far this week? I know we got some, some work to do on the model, but right now, surprises. Highlight, yeah, highlighting some value at the top of the board. Uh, so far, leading the way on a mention share perspective is Sung J coming in at fifty percent, uh, but the MPI has some questions. It's uh, pretty low thus far. On the other side of the coin, Tommy Fleetwood, ninety three hundred, also a fifty percent mention share. And the MPI is in love. Uh, next grouping at 43%, Colin Morikawa, Roy McIlroy, 99 and 11.4, respectively. And then we have a whole quagmire of folks at 36% mention share. Aaron Rye, Corey Connors, Louis, Sahith, Tom Kim, and Terria Hatton. I am fascinated by the pricing this week. Um, you got six players above 10K. We're going all the way up to Scotty at 12.8, $1,300 clear of Bryson. And I have, a, I have a rant to get on here at some point. But six players above 10K, but only, I think I counted 18 players above 8K. So you effectively have an average of six players in the 10K plus, 9K plus, and 8K plus. And I need to go back and just, I want to check that against past events because I might just be misremembering and on exactly how this normally shakes out. I feel like we're really light in the 8Ks, maybe a player or two light in the 9Ks. And so it ends up feeling like there's a ton of, a ton of players sitting below 8K. Um, but just not that many choices in that in that mid range. So I'm curious what that's going to do to lineup construction. I don't want to get into all of it quite yet. I'd love to hear Kyle like where where you thinking of starting, but it feels like there's just a only a handful of choices up top. Yeah, I mean I agree with some of the pricing, and we'll I mean we'll start with Sungjae, uh, sixty nine hundred dollars, and I get the you know majors pricing comes out early, so that does not take into account his T four last week, but it's not. Like he was in poor form yeah. for that. <laughs> T12, 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 throw T3. the T4 out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was cut at the US Open, uh, but T8, T9. So he has one missed cut and four top 13s uh, prior to even T4 last week. So that, how that guy's $6,900 uh, seems uh, egregious. And it's a, not a course that's going to. Rule him out just from a distance perspective. Uh, so also, that's probably going to come with high ownership. Uh, but, uh, man, it's hard to not have exposure to Sung Jae at 69. I, I'm i all in at Fleetwood uh, at 9,300. Uh, just, yes, we're, we're on the link style course. Uh, but he faded a little bit last week on, on Sunday. But outside of that, Yes, it's Tommy in a major, uh, so I wouldn't bet him to win per se. Uh, but I I like the value of at that point. Yes, he ended up at T thirty four last week after coming off a T twenty one, T twenty, sixteen, and fifteen. Um, that seems like a, a decent price at ninety three hundred. At a course, he should be a great fit as well. And then at the top of the board. I'm curious to see where people go, but my first inkling is is Rory and being all in at 11-4, not worried about the finish at the Open. He he faded a little bit on Sunday uh, last week as well, but I think he was using that as a warm up to to get in the mode of uh, to be there this week. And I just like what you can do starting at 11-4 Rory over going up to a, a Scotty at 12-8 who has not been great in Open Championships. Is it a hot take if I say Scotty's winning open? Um, no, because if we have to say, wait, say that again. Is it a hot take if I say Scotty doesn't win the career Grand Slam because he doesn't win an open championship? 
I thought, yeah, that's not what I took out of the first thing that you said. Yeah, I thought you said <laughs> does and win at first. That's what. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, kind of. I think so. I I think in the rotation, there's a little bit. There's enough difference and nuance in the rotation that it opens it up to some different skill sets. That I, I think Scotty's going to get there. Okay. I, don't, I wish I would have done the research to come up with a, a really good reason of why I think that, but I think I've convinced myself at least this week that Rory's my guy as well up top. And I know you're going to eat, you're going to eat a lot of chalk no matter where you go. 10 K if you want to go Ludwig, Scotty, DeChambeau, Xander for that matter. I mean, all those guys are going to be 20 plus. And so I, you just got to pick the guy you think is going to win. And and for me, I I do agree. I think it's Rory. You just you he's had a fantastic season. We're so sour on him because he hasn't won a major, and it's a little bit unfair because he literally finished second in the last one he played with, but in the last one he played in. So I think again, he, he putted awful last week at the Scottish. This is a course you don't need to putt well, and I, I have some other thoughts on on that topic as well, but. The guy for me above 10K, though, if I'm truly going to get him sub 10, is John Rahm. And 10-4 is too much to pay for a guy that has been almost totally disinterested in performing in a major. But he hasn't really played all that poorly out on his little exhibition tour. He hasn't played that bad. I mean, he's T10 at uh, Valderrama, T3 in Nashville. He had a withdrew from Houston. I didn't really follow up on that. But, you know, if you, if you, some of the sites will have the strokes gain data available for the live guys. Like John, certainly in the areas where we want him performing around the green play has been really strong. He's been putting well. Ball striking numbers generally pretty good outside of the major championships. I think John has had a pretty good season and 10 4. The pricing doesn't worry me. It's more if I can get the ownership break. I want to catch him. His his uh his British Open record is pretty strong. He finished uh T ten. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Um he was uh, I screwed up my data golf thing. Um he was T two last year at the at the uh at the open championship, T34 the year before t3 in 21 um t11 back in 2019 like he's performed in this event and so throw out the masters the pga the us open um john rom's seven percent ownership sign me up so houston was when he had the cut between his toes remember? oh that's right thank and you thank and you. then he okay. yeah there should be on that uh so uh, Dennis Hester at the Athletic uh, highlighted something similar. He's very into round this week. But his take, Mike, and I thought you were going to go here, which was going to make me laugh as well, is, well, Spain just won the Euros, and a Spaniard won Wimbledon, I believe. Alcaraz, yeah, so, Carlos. So so he's just <laughs> riding that high of Spain and going to go to get it done from that perspective. Yeah, I, it's got to it's got to be an ownership play for me though because ten four is enough to almost like jam him up with another guy uh, up there, and so I I want to I want to see a little bit of leverage on Rom, and so that's that's where I'm at. Um, your take on Tommy? Yeah, like if Tommy was a hundred percent owned this week, I'd play him. So no no question, ninety three hundred dollars, sure. Um, but the the point that I want to make though. The pricing here, because of what I commented on in the first three tiers, what is going on in the six, in the seven and high six range? So we got JT at 7,400, which you probably could have said JT 6,400, or you could have said JT 8,400, and either would have been totally okay. But J JT at 7,400, Sahith 7,200, after having... Very good showing at the Scottish Open, but you're telling me that Willie Z and Sahit the Gala are the same price this week? And I know the pricing came out before Zal Torres missed the cut of the Scottish Open, but that feels like Zal Torres' price went up this week in a field yeah. that got stronger. <laughs> like, 
I did I did not get that. So to me, like the gala, absolute value smash play. Wyndham Clark eight thousand feels five to eight hundred dollars too low for having also a very good week previously. Akshay at seven thousand. Is anybody going to be surprised if he finishes top five this week? Um, you've already commented on Sungjae at sixty nine hundred dollars, which is totally unfair. Russell Henley, um, his uh, his play this year, his floor has been absolutely stellar as far as making cuts. And if I go back to his open championship record, not very good. Um, but again, he does a lot of the things right that we're looking for. Very like one of the strongest iron players on tour and very good around the green. So Russell Henley at $6,700. I almost could make a lineup of all of those guys and be just fine this week. It seems like a lot of guys that we're used to, even at majors, clicking in high sevens, low eights. Right. If you're trying to yeah. get a balanced oh. build, maybe you reach up to one guy, but you can fit the other five. But so, but part of this, I think, is driven by the fact that you have all of these live guys coming in that we got to put somewhere. And because the data on who like we're, we're basically indexing on their name and not their performance, mm-hmm. we slot them higher than they probably should be. Bryson at 11 five. I know he's coming off a way. His rage record has been great this year, but not necessarily his open record um bryson at 11 5 really surprised me i already commented on rom cameron smith 8900 i know he's been pretty good by live standards but again i don't know that i'm ready for cameron smith at 8900 the one that blew my mind the seven k's was speed at 7900 like you could have put speed at 6700 and i would have been fine with that so i just like the it's gonna be really that's why it's like you can just pick your guys up top pick two of them because you got plenty of guys in the six and seven Ks that and you even can avoid a little bit of ownership here too. Yeah, the speed thing is right. The the narrative about him being great on links courses, which he I, I forget the exact yeah, when stats, he plays but... good golf during the year. Correct. But <laughs> if there is this feels like such a speedy course, but give me the guy that's speedy in two thousand twenty three and two thousand twenty four, not actually Jordan Speed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. So all of that being said, my favorite play this week is Hideki Matsuyama. Hideki is the number one player around the greens this year. Um, it's absolutely the stat that I'm going to over index on. His open championship record isn't great. Earlier in his career, he had a number of top 20 finishes. He was T13 last year, um, but a little intermittent before that. But he's had such a great season. Last week, he lost 10 strokes on the green, his worst putting performance of the year. And so what do you do? You bring the guy back to a golf course where you literally don't have to putt well and say, don't worry about it, Decky. You actually don't even need to practice. You don't have to get better. Just be Decky and come to Royal Troon and dominate. So uh, Hideki, 8,500, my favorite play of the week. Just be Decky. I'm out of takes. Jordan, I was waiting. I mean, what, what do you got for us, Jordan? There's a golf tournament this weekend? Yeah. I, Jordan, I, my I'm, my take was watching Johnson Wagner chip it over. Uh, <laughs> I, I told, I told Kyle, you know, I said, thought into this. Does Jordan know the Open Championship is this weekend? He's focused that, on his member guest. That is the only reason I came on is because I knew it was the Open Championship. <laughs> well. I don't miss majors, guys. I don't miss majors. The reason you came on, Kyle, do you have any other plays? Otherwise, I'm going to tell Jordan the reason he came on. Well, go ahead, Mike. What is the reason okay. he came on? He came on because we're going to introduce the name game. And last week, I had a lot of fun with the name game. Jordan, I know you missed it, but we had it was fun. We had Scottish Open. You got a lot of DP World Tour guys. And we just had three teams of european players uh, by their country or four teams of european players by their country so you had team germany team scotland team england and team sweden but none of the studs uh, unfortunately the listeners jordan edged you by the team that we gave you which was team england they edged you by four points and i think oh. a lot of it had to do with connor connor simi um and so the listeners have taken have tied kyle for the lead in the name game ooh, uh, ooh, at ooh. nine wins a piece so we're getting into it we're getting into it and so this week um you know there's a lot of ways you can go i think last year I had like fake scottish towns that uh were inspired where, where players families ancestral roots were um 
but as I was scrolling through the salary through the the player list, there were just too many guys that I was like, "Who the f is this?" <laughs> and so I decided to just go with four teams of two guys I want to hear Kyle Reed and a fourth guy that's reasonably good to make the money work out right. Oh man, <laughs> some of these look like he just fell on a keyboard. <laughs> Kyle, oh, Jordan's man. here. Let's let's. He stuck it out. He's defected by Nyquil. Let's make it worth it. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle you're not. Team one, Denwit, Bori Boonsub. Uh, it's five thousand dollars this week. He is part of his team. Is Mashihiro Kawamura at fifty four hundred and Victor Hoblin. That's team one. $20,100 total salary. Team two, Ryosuke Kinoshita, um, $5,000. And Louis Masavu, $5,200. And they're with Colin Morikawa at $20,100 for the team salary. Uh, team three, Juyong Hung Wang, $5,100. And Nacho. Elevira, fifty-six hundred, along with Tommy Fleetwood, to make that team twenty thousand dollars. And team four, oh boy, uh, Alton Van Der May Merway, uh, fifty-two hundred, and Kazuma Kobori, uh, fifty-three hundred, uh, along with Tyrell Hatton, uh, team twenty thousand. I don't feel like I did that bad. No, I think you did pretty good. You're getting better. I really focused just, on that one. I, I, like, yeah, the Open Championship, I don't know if it's because of the qualifying process and just where they have qualifiers, but, man, um, I feel a little just culturally out of the loop. With I um, can't. I'd say those first two on each team I've never heard of before. Also... Please, Kyle, go put money on Nacho Elvira, Elvira to win because he's Spanish. And if a Spaniard yeah. is going to win, it's probably not going to be Rob anymore. So, All right, Nacho, Nacho. <laughs> I, am, I, I am in a betting location. Uh, One Dinwit, dollar you a lot of money. Dinwit Bori Boonsub is... Uh, he, you can place $1 bet to win... Two thousand five hundred one dollars. There were so <laughs> many zeros. In first glance, I couldn't even figure out what the odds were. The uh, the books are on to Denwit here. Um, uh, Kyle, well, you got first pick. So after doing all ooh, that, you got first. Pick. Um, I I mean clearly, I'm going to take uh, Team Nacho with Tommy Fleetwood. Team Nacho. Nacho. And Jay Hung Wang. I Jay think, Wang in the house. Jay Wang, yeah. I think you got to go with the guy. I think you got to go with the anchor that you think is going to play the best because we're talking a bunch of other 5K players. Um, for me, I'll pick second. Ah, man. Great cases to be made for both Colin and Terrell Hatton this week. Uh, but I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a little funky and go Tyrell Hatton. So Jordan, for you, it's either uh, Denwit, Masahiro, and uh, and Victor, or um, Alton Kazuma. No, I picked them. Jeez, <laughs> uh, Ryusuke, Luis, and Colin. You know, I'm gonna go the Colin group because uh, Luis is an amateur, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go that he gets low <laughs> amateur for the week. Oh man, I think that's right. I think I think we get the listeners, Vic. Let yeah, this let's be a let Vic week again. I don't I don't think it's gonna be a Vic week. I'll I'll say that if we're talking about around the green play as being. Uh, one of the be- most correlated stats of success in Vic is that at all, I don't know if he's at all time low, but he's approaching his all time low and around the game play. Uh, not a Vic week for me. Guys, Kyle. we are in for Nacho at, uh, at top 10. I'm not going to go out right, but I'll go top 10. 
Uh, that that could happen. I mean, we'd love to so, see him on the leaderboard. Seventy-five to one, top ten. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Well, what else you got in the betting card? Well, um, so I uh, was in Iowa last week, so we took some pre-reset odds. So I want to workshop a couple things as a group. But so some of the future bets, if you will. I got Sungjae at sixty-five. Uh, thought that was just a good number. Turns out the model really likes him this week, so I I feel good about that getting in at sixty-five. At Matthew Pavon at one fifty. Uh, it turns out I could probably get a little bit better number than hit that right now, but I'll take it. I have Keegan at 170, just for the narrative, you know, right after getting named. And uh, then I have, I have Louis at 90, who's really getting steamed up this week, especially in the betting market. So I, I have room in that card, uh, not top 10, notwithstanding, to probably, because, you know, some of those, the 170 and whatnot, are not even full units, obviously. But I probably have room to go to you know, two top guys or a, a top and a mid guy. So mm-hmm. sell me on something. I mean, there's some yeah. crazy numbers out there. Mike, you talk Decky. I can get him at 45. Uh, Max is up to 110. That's just kind of uh, uh, you know, Terrell's at 28. Terrell is, I think, uh, I think I hear a lot of love for Terrell. Decky, I love Decky this week. So I think 45 is a very fair number for him. Max, if Max would have showed me a little something at the Scottish, we love that Max is a grinder and he can thrive under these conditions. But maybe Scottish isn't tough enough. Maybe that's the problem. Like, I do think he can play well here. Um, and he, yeah, so so I, I don't I don't mind that. Um but yeah, I, I uh, let's. We're just getting. I got. I got to spend a little time on this. I do think Decky forty five sounds pretty good to me. All right, so I'm I'm in for Decky at forty five. Then that I I could probably shoot to somebody in the twenties or uh, I, yeah, to make my work yeah. work. So open to ideas. Open to ideas. All right, Mike, we'll think you about it. you you also took Fleetwood twenty two. I took Fleetwood at twenty two. I love I love Tommy this week, but like you said, like. Great DFS play, regardless of ownership. Probably not going to win the tournament, so I'm going to need to. I'm going to back that up with some place bets here. I got to go through the. It was before the before the place bets came out. Um, you mentioned Keegan, just being named Ryder Cup captain. Is this the ultimate flex if he comes in to Scotland and just steps on the throat of the Euros and wins the British Open this week? For sure. That's why I had to go with the narrative play. One seventy, just just in case. And I, I mean. Heck, you don't have to squint terribly hard to see it being a Keegan course. No, right? Of course not. Of course yeah, not. He's not going to miss the cut, and then they're going to lose the Ryder Cup because he's not going to be a good coach. But can I ask you a question? And I had a thought today. We can maybe end the show on this. This is, I mean, this, I mean, we asked Keegan Jordan. I didn't miss the show last week. We asked Keegan Bradley. We, the American people, asked Keegan Bradley to be its Ryder Cup captain for the uh, 2025 Ryder Cup, as you know. Seemed pretty random outside of the Netflix scripting. Would it be, how crazy would it be if the PGA of America went and asked a player that has no Ryder Cup experience and would never have any Ryder Cup experience, but is just like a dog and, and like, they're like, Hey, if this guy's going to put it, put his all into it because he'd never have the opportunity otherwise. Like, is it crazy if like Zach Blair was asked to be the, the Ryder Cup captain. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. You got <laughs> you got other guys that fit that mold before you get down there. Yeah. I just I just kiss on Zach Flair, but he does seem like what a about this dude. ain't no that this ain't no hobby. Well, that's like, what I was thinking. But Kisner played. I think he played a Ryder Cup. The Presidents Cup. Presidents Cup, least. maybe. I yeah. So, but there are some guys out there that, like I said, just might be dogs that that they could have gone to. So I, I don't know the Keegan thing. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really kind of into, but I was also kind of imagining a future in which like Adam Shank was the Ryder cup. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> what about Tom Hoagie? Would he turn the yeah, room into just, a casino? A and craft table? Everyone would have yeah. to be hung over that. If you want to really mess with the euros, you just, you do something like that. I think it yeah. could be wild. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think Tiger's the captain 2029 in Minneapolis. I'm with you, Kyle, that 
Tiger's probably a year a, a captain on European soil before he's a captain on U.S. soil. He Jordan, he doesn't want to lose. Tiger's not going to set himself up to lose. Tiger is going to be in at Hazeltine where he knows he can set it up for all his freaking bombers. That and they're going to go kick ass. Well, we're going to be there. We'll be there. I'll leave it. Uh, we'll leave it with that. You can follow us on Twitter at RTG Podcast DFS. We have new tournament preview episodes out every week on our YouTube channel, Reading the Green, and any major podcast platform. And we'll be back within, in a week with the results of the Open Championship at Royal Troon and preview our absolute favorite event of the year, the Hometown Open, the 3M Open. See ya.